hope you're all doing well. This is me, Mara Latori, with the Funky Spork. I missed you all so, so much. It is so good to be back. Um, for those of you that may not know what's kind of been going on with my personal life, um, all good things. Um, I just got married. Yes, I got married to the love of my life, Jeremy. And uh, this past weekend, we celebrated our wedding. It was beautiful, it was intimate. We had close family and friends come to celebrate with us. And um, we've had some out of town relatives coming to visit. And it's just been a really crazy, but beautiful time getting to spend with my family and now my new added family, which I, I mean, I've always felt part of the family, but it's just been really good just to have that extra time. So because of that, um, because of all that does go into a wedding, um, I thought it was most appropriate just for me to really focus on that moment, focus on that really important chapter of my life, um, because that to me is something that is very important. Family is one of my big, biggest values, and um, I really just want to immerse myself. So um, I took a little bit of a mini pause from Funky Spork, but not to worry, folks. I am back. I am so happy to reconnect with every single one of you. I feel really recharged from this um, new exciting season of my life, having an amazing husband that I'll get to spend my life with, um, going on crazy adventures with, having a lifetime guinea pig will get to experiment with all my crazy recipes and just getting to explore food and life and deliciousness together. That is something that is just... I don't know, it just makes me really happy and really excited. So I can't wait to keep all of you folks posted on just, you know, some tidbits of my life journey. Um, the business, um, for some of you that also may be wondering what's going on with that, Funky Spork has also evolved into a business. I am proud and excited to say that I am now an LLC, um, so which means that I'm a limited liability company. So that just makes me feel really good, really excited. I'm going to be going to the bank later on today to, you know, get some more documents officiated. Um, for anyone that knows or that's an, an entrepreneur, I have to say that. Um, it takes time. It takes time to cultivate a business. I did the crazy thing and take, took a leap of faith to pursue this and self-employment full-time just to really focus on this platform and see where things can go. But I have a um, just a really exciting partnership that I will be lining up. Um, I'll be revealing that to you folks, but just at a later time. But in the meantime, stay tuned. It definitely encompasses my passion for delicious food and locality. Um, so it's definitely going to be something really good and really exciting. So, woo -hoo 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 -hoo. so I thought today I would do something a little bit different now that I am back. Um, you know, typically I will post a recipe video or a farm to sport feature. So I thought I'd do something a little bit out of the box. And um, my husband and I we recently became members of a local csa which is called a um, community supported agricultural system and essentially what a csa is um just to sum it up is it is a basically it's a farm system that has members and all of the members purchase a share of the farm and essentially what we're doing is we are investing in the small scale farm and reaping collectively in the benefits and the hardships and the challenges and the blood sweat and tears of this local agricultural operation and the farm that we became members of for our csa share is called steed farm eventually i will be having steed farm featured for farm to spork but until then i want to show you what we got so as i said we became members of this farm system so what we did was my husband and I since it's just two of us in the house in addition to our baby plants we decided to become um, members to purchase a half share of produce so that means that from November when it started until May we will be receiving produce rather than every single week throughout the season we will be receiving produce every other week but it's still quite a bit so um, just to show you what we wound up got getting uh, look at this we have a really heavy bag I want to say this is at least maybe seven pounds I haven't weighed it but I really should 
and um, I want to do a farm haul. Um, this is going to be my first produce haul where I'm showing you some of the local seasonal produce grown here in the Plant City area. This um, farm, Steed Farm, um, they are located about maybe 10 miles south of where I live, so it's pretty darn local. Um, they use organic practices with their produce and um, they grow based on the season. So um, I got some pretty neat things. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna get because I've never been a member of a CSA before, but I do my best to support local as often as I can. And I thought this was a really great opportunity to support my friends and to support the movement that they're doing while also encouraging my husband and I to eat healthy and eat seasonally and eat locally. So it's really a beautiful win-win. So if you're ready, um, I am totally ready to show you some of the fun stuff we got. Um, there's a couple things in here I've never even cooked with or had heard of until um, I picked up my share this past Saturday and I'm going to be scrolling pictures throughout so you can kind of see some of the stuff that I got. Um, just really nice folks. Um, but anyway, let me go ahead and get started. Um, I have my list here because some of the produce um, you know, I hadn't heard of before so I'm very, very excited. But let's go ahead and start. Um, I brought this and you'll, I'll explain why in a second. Okay. So one of the first things that I have here, um, these over here are known as um, Southern Peas. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a zoom up as well so you can see it. But these were literally picked right before we came. And these little guys over here are relatives of black eyed peas. But what's unique about these little guys here is that they're pink eyed peas. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna maybe do some sort of stew to incorporate these little peas, but um, they're absolutely beautiful. I mean, you have that kind of rose color with this nice little mint green and they look absolutely incredible. Whoops. Okay, so this is the first thing that we got. And now the second thing, we got some delicious green beans. Um, I would say that's close to about a pound, half a pound. Um, and these are the green beans. They are just in excellent shape. They look so good. And just to think that these were picked really and literally before I arrived. It's pretty awesome. Um, before I go more into showing you more of the produce that we got, I want to say one of the benefits I do like about a CSA is that, you know, not only are you financially supporting local farmers, but you're also building and developing relationships with them. So what I like about picking up my produce share on a consistent bi-weekly basis is that I can go in person and pick up my veggies and fruit from the steeds who are the farmers that have worked so hard to cultivate and grow this delicious produce that my husband and I are going to have on our dinner and lunch tables and possibly breakfast tables too. So it's great just to also build that relationship um, with one another. It, it's just great. It's it's something that I don't really see as often with, you know, you can't quite do that with grocery stores. It's not as easy to um, get to know the direct growers behind some of the produce you find there. So um, this is probably where the majority of our produce will be coming from. We may get some stuff from grocery stores here and there, but as I said, we want to do our best to support um, local sustainable food, especially organically grown as often as we can. So anyway, let me show you some more stuff. It's pretty exciting. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and pick here, uh-huh, it's a little tricky. Okay, so the next thing that we got during the week um, is called Mizuna. Mizuna is a variety of spinach that I literally heard of 
on this past Saturday when I went to pick up the produce. It's kind of similar from what Jen Steve told me that's related to the mustard green family. But check this out. Um, it's supposed to have a really nice mild flavor to it. It's supposed to be very lovely to saute or add in salads. But um, typically when you think of a spinach leaf, it's almost kind of like an eye drop shape. But I found these to be a little bit more interesting because these have more of a rigged shape with the leaves. Um, some of the leaves are almost, they almost are reminiscent of kale. Let me try to sniff them. I mean, a nice mild flavor. Um, let me try to taste a piece. Okay. With Mizuna, I see what Jen means. It does have, um, I don't want to quite compare it to arugula, but it does have a little bit of a spice, almost what you would see with a mustard green. Um, so I'm really excited to use this. Extremely excited. All right, so um, one of the next things we also got in the produce share, as soon as I can get these little buddies. <laughs> You're gonna love this. I'm telling you, I am so excited. The share allowed for picking two to three sweet potatoes. Check these out. Look at this. This almost looks like a saxophone. And look at this long one. I mean, and this one's a little bit more look normal looking, but I saw these two and I just thought, this is just so cool. I'm really excited to have some pretty gnarly shaped sweet potatoes. It kind of looks like a mustache. Um, but what is more important, what really stands out to me about these funky little folks here is that to some, um, especially when it comes to larger grocers, these may be considered ugly and there's this big trend to uh, get rid of perfectly good produce if it doesn't meet some kind of more traditional aesthetic look. But I really have to say that even if your produce is a little bit more unconventional looking, it's still perfectly good to eat. So um, just because your apple or your pear may have an extra bump and it may look almost like a tumor, more times out of not, it's gonna be fine. You're, you're gonna be fine. But anyway, let me show you some more stuff that I got. All right, so um, Steve Farm, they also do grow sugar cane. Um, so they gave me this tiny little stick of sugar cane. I am personally trying to cut back on um, most carbs, especially processed carbs and sugars, but this is a naturally sourced sugar cane. I'm probably, what I'm thinking of doing with this one is probably cutting it up into like spears or sticks and using it almost as like kebab skewers. Maybe using like a tiny piece for like a little bit of a light sweetener. I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I never really had sugar cane or really sugar in this literal form. So I'm pretty excited and pretty intrigued. So we got that over here. All right, so I have here um, two pieces that go hand in hand. This, my friends, is what we call daikon radish. Um, it almost looks like a little fella crossing their legs. Isn't that kind of cute and cool? Um, it is also kind of similar to, it's another type of root. Think of a carrot or think of a radish or even a potato, um, but a daikon is definitely a cousin of the, um, within that family. Now the thing is though, with these kind of radishes, they're a little spicy. They have a little bit of a bite to them. Um, I'm thinking about roasting this, cutting it up into nice pieces and, you know, putting a little bit of olive oil, massaging that a little bit and letting it roast in my oven. But if you have any other kind of ideas on what I can do with this, let me know because I mean, really the world is an oyster and if I can sit as, um, <laughs> dapperly as my friend here, I will be happy. I'm going to try to see if I can get it to stand up. Oh no. <laughs> I'm trying to see if they can sit down, but you know, let's, let's imagine going to be my new friends and I'm going to try to put some eyes and stuff. This here, remember I was saying that these two are related? <laughs> yeah, this is literally the stem of the daikon radish and as you notice, I'm grabbing this with tongs. Um, the daikon radish leaves can be sauteed or they can be used in salad. Um, as I was saying, I'm grabbing these specific fellows with tongs because one thing that I found was that there are some very pointy ends um, 
almost like little small thorns with the daikon radish hand uh radish leaves and um i got spiked a couple times as i was picking uh the radish up i love you jen <laughs> thank you so much i'm not mad but um it was definitely something that um, kind of took me for surprise so because of that reason i'm holding these with tongs so i'm gonna have to do a little bit more research before i confidently bite into this i know i'm definitely gonna cut off the stem because i'm finding that these little thorny bits are coming from the stem themselves but um i know that should do it it could use a little bit of a rinse with all of this produce but i think from doing that that should greatly reduce that but once again i'm going to do a little bit more research on the uh, leaves themselves but they're supposed to have really nice flavor i guess almost like a little bit of a bite as well but these from what i have been told work really great with salads or you can also saute them so i mean you can't really go wrong with either of those all right all right friends well it's not over yet what you see here are two very large voluptuous zucchinis um they're pretty big i mean this one I could probably, you know, use as a weightlifter. It's probably about two pounds. I'd be shocked if it was anything less than a pound. This is probably about a pound. Um, so I feel like right now I have about three pounds worth of zucchini here. Um, and I mean, there's a lot of different options what I could do with this. I might actually uh, turn these into zoodles. I'm craving pasta, but you know, once again, I'm really trying to cut down on refined carbs so I think this will make a pretty neat alternative I might even turn these into ribbons to make almost like a almost like a linguine or a flatter pasta um, so I don't know I'm still trying to think and figure out what I'm gonna do with this but anyway this is what else I got and that's not it <laughs> we have one more produce variety in here that I'm gonna show you Are you ready to drum roll uh, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Squash. We were each able to choose one variety of squash. The Steeds had a couple different types of squashes that they were growing on their farm property, but this little guy over here is what I was choosing. Um, I mean, there's, I love squash. I think it's delicious. I think it's yummy and tasty. I'm definitely gonna experiment with this, but folks, as you can see here, this is a lot of freaking produce. It's a lot. It is in abundance. Um, the fact that it is just my husband in the household, um, I think we're going to eat pretty well. My goal is um, really, at least from Monday through Friday, which is typically when I cook throughout the week, is to find ways to incorporate each of these ingredients. Um, especially the incentive being that because it's produce it has a shorter shelf life and also because these are locally sourced they have a stronger nutritional content but um, my question to you is if you have do you have any ideas what I could do with any of this I, I have some ideas what I, I could make during the week but if anything stands out any kind of recipe suggestions it can be vegan it can be vegetarian it can even have some meat, um, something omnivorous. Um, let me know, comment below. I would love to hear some of your input. Um, I'm definitely about incorporating these with some other type of grocery ingredients as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to hear from you and hear what you have to say. You know, once again, folks, it is so good to be back with all of you. I am so happy to just have this chance to reconnect and talk to you all. If you want to follow me and all my tasty and delicious adventures, please feel free to hit that subscribe button below. Um, like me on my Facebook page and follow my blog, which is found at www.thefunkysport.com. It's a really great platform where I share original recipes and I also promote various players and processes involved within our local food systems. Um, but yeah, all good stuff, I promise you. And also, if you're interested in finding ways to support me, I am also available on Patreon. So I'm going to have all these fun and exciting links below. And I'm also going to have information on what CSAs happen to be. Um, you should also be able to find a local CSA near you, just depending on where you happen to be located. Just know that um, every locality 
geographically is going to vary on the type of produce that is offered. Um, climate and season will um, really be factors in what is offered at that particular time of the year. Right now we're still in fall in Florida, so this is what we have. So it's definitely gonna change by February and by March. So I'm excited just to kind of eat with the season. And finally, last but not least, I'm gonna post some information about Steed Farm. So if you're local, if you're from the Plant City, Lakeland, Central Florida area, and you're looking just to connect with um, a local CSA for you and your household, I'm gonna put their information below. So anyway, folks, I have to run and take care of some other things today, but um, it's been really good to connect, and that's all I have for now, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.